thank you for that. We've got um, one more speaker, but I really want us to make sure we have time to do other things. Two more, sorry. Two more speakers. Uh, before I introduce our next speaker, uh, Vicky Foxcroft is a prospective uh, Labour MP standing for this Lewisham, Bedford and Lewisham East. Um, before I introduce her, I just want to say that, just to remind people, about 50% of MPs in Parliament support Israel, and they get funding from various Israeli groups. That includes our current Foreign Secretary, who went to see, meet the people of Israel at the beginning of this the latest round of uh, fighting. Osborne, oh, many of them. It's not just the Tories, it's across the board. And as Leah was saying, it really makes a difference when MPs get letters. And because the amount of letters that, talk, that MPs are getting, they are actually uncomfortable. And they've gone to the government and said, we're getting so many of these letters. We know that people like uh, Vicky are supporting our cause, but a lot of parts of the country, there are MPs who don't. So if you've got friends and family in any other parts of the country, encourage them to write, speak, go to see the camp, their um, MPs in the surgeries. Lobby as hard as you can, and we've got this lobby coming up in September the 9th, I thought it was this, no. the 9th, and a lobby means, for those who don't know, because I didn't, um, you, you tell your MP you want to meet them, and you go to the Parliament, and you meet them in the lobby, and you tell them what you think they should be doing. Um, and as um, um, the thing is that we are worried that Gaza is losing mainstream media coverage, not that it was brilliant anyway, but... Um, things are being taken over in Iraq, and we don't want this issue to go away. It's really important to understand in terms of Middle East politics, but also like how we've kept the, um, the pressure going in terms of apartheid South Africa. We need to keep this uh, momentum going. It is different this time, but we need to widen it. We need to widen it in terms of cultural boycotts, academic boycotts, um, direct action, and so on, and we should not let it go. Um, so Vicky is going to now speak. She's been um, great in terms of meeting the most people already. So, so Vicky Foxcroft. Yeah, well, firstly, thanks very much for inviting us here this evening and giving us the opportunity to speak and for organising this event. Um, if I just clarify um, exactly kind of what my title is, just so um, anybody um, else doesn't get offended. So I'm Labour's parliamentary candidate um, for the run-up to the next general election. I'm not, um, I'm not an MP unless people vote for me to become the MP. Um, what I'm going to try and do is not touch on um, lots of the other areas that people have so eloquently spoke on this evening, but to try and touch on some... Um, some some other areas. Um, I I think one of the big things is I've, I've not been to Palestine myself, um, but I've seen all of the horrific images that have come through on social media. I've retweeted many things, um, uh, support from young Jewish woman who says, this is not in my name, please don't think that I want what is taking place from the Israeli government to be happening. You know, it disturbs me. Um, you know, so many horrific images that we've all seen. Um, I've been on the demonstrations. I've tweeted the pictures from the demonstrations. I've called on the BBC to make sure that they go and report it. You know, I did one tweet. I've never had a tweet retweeted so many times from one of the demonstrations, the first one. And 600 people retweeted it. I mean, that's just massive. I only have 1,500 followers, so um, I've never had anything like that retweeted before. So I think the power by people using social media, getting out there, doing stuff, saying stuff, has been really, really strong and powerful. I think sometimes we can feel frustrated that we can't do as much as we want to do to be able to help in situations. I think sometimes... Um, especially among young people, we can feel like we can't make a difference. But I think that you, w we can make a difference. I think we need to make sure that people believe they can make a difference by all coming together collectively in this room this evening on the demonstrations. I should have also said, actually, I'm a trade unionist. I work for um, Unite the Union um, in my day job at the moment. And I really do truly believe that that we need to make sure that people 
do honestly believe that they can make that difference and change things. And, you know, we've gone and got the ceasefire at the moment. Now, we all know there's been numerous ceasefires, but to me, this seems like the most positive one that's been there. Um, from what I've heard briefly on the BBC, and I hope that it's true, um, you know, that it will be an open-ended cease, uh, open ended ceasefire, that they'll be allowing aid in, that the blockade will be lifted and rebuilding can begin. But we need to make sure that we keep the pressure calling for that, that we need to not let um, this issue go um, unreported. We know that the national media doesn't report stuff and that our best way of making sure that we can get out our messages is through social media. Um, I'm not going to go on too long because I know you want to get on to, que uh, to questions, but I just wanted to say one thing, um, that as a Labour politician, I won't be quiet on this issue. Um, you can guarantee <laughs> that I won't be afraid to stand up and say what I think is important and needs to be said. You know, of course, I welcome the ceasefire and I hope that it holds but we do need to make sure that this stays at the forefront of the political agenda.